morning friends and dear students it gives me immense pleasure to be here again for my course flight mechanics this course belongs to the fourth semester of aeronautical engineering as of now i have covered the four module and this is i am running in the fifth module before that i have already covered the climb is climb performance cruise performance maneuvering performance pull up pull down thrust required power required all these topics i have already covered in this before this i have done with landing and the take off performance today i am going to discuss about fuel reserve in aircraft in this i am going to discuss about different fuels and their reserves in aircraft i am dr vaidhi duvedi professor from institute of aeronautical engineering hyderabad in today's i am going to discuss about fuel planning taxi and the trip fuel in flight fuel management procedure if fuel is less dumping of fuel and the tank location fuel calculation flight planning so first i will discuss the fuel planning fuel flight planning definitions so we have something about flight planning definition so in that first one is the additional fuel so what is the meaning of additional fuel additional fuel is the fuel which is added to comply with a specific regulatory or company requirement so it is additional fuel is the additional fuel which is added to comply with a specific regulatory or company requirement so it is as per the regulatory body this additional fuel has to be considered alternative fuel alternate fuel is the amount of fuel required from the missed approach point at the destination aerodrome until landing at the alternative aerodrome it takes into account the required fuel for so if you are planned from a airport to the b and in the b airport during the landing it was assumed that it is there is a missed approach so if this is the missed approach aircraft has to go again go around and in that some additional fuel is required that fuel is called the alternate fuel and it takes the account of the following things that is the missed approach at the destination airport then from here it is about to land so from here it is missed and then it has to be climbed like this so climb to in route altitude cruise and descend at the alternate aerodrome so so from here a it has to go to c so from here it will take off climb go to the again again it will go and then it will land so how much fuel is there this is called the alternate fuel approach at alternate landing at the alternate aerodrome so here if you see missed approach at the destination airport climb to in route altitude cruise and descent to alternate aerodrome then approach at the approach at alternate aerodrome landing at the alternate so these are the things which are to be considered for the fuel planning and that is for alternate fuel now next is the ballast fuel as you know ballast means balancing of the aircraft so, so sometimes the fuel is used for the ballasting purpose ballast fuel is sometimes carried to maintain the aircraft's center of gravity within the limit so suppose this is the fuselage these are the wings and sometimes the weight of the aircraft or the weight of the passenger or the weight of the cargo is more in this side then what will happen the ballast fuel is used this ballast fuel means this side fuel will be less consumed and here fuel will be more consumed 
So this fuel, which is not consumed, is acting as a ballast to maintain the center of gravity within the given limits of the aircraft. So if it's the CG and this is the limit, you should not cross here or here. So that is the purpose of the ballast fuel. Next is the contingency fuel or the root, fuel, root reserve. Contingency fuel is carried to account for additional in route fuel consumption caused by wind routing changes. So, sometimes we have to take some emergency requirement that is called the contingency fuel and this contingency fuel is carried to account for additional in route fuel consumption caused by the wind route changes. According to ICAO Annex 6, the recommended minimum contingency fuel is the greater of 5% of the trip fuel or 5 minutes holding consumption at 15,000 feet above the destination airfield. So, this contingency fuel should be greater than the 5% of the total fuel and or 5 minutes holding consumption. So, it should hold 5 minutes of the flight for the aircraft that is called the contingency fuel. Then we can talk about the final reserve fuel, fixed reserve fuel and the holding fuel. So final reserve fuel is the minimum fuel required to fly for 30 minutes at 1500 feet above the alternate aerodrome or if an alternate is not required at the destination aerodrome at holding speed in ISA International Atmospheric Standard Atmospheric some regulating authority required sufficient fuel to hold for 45 minutes. So most of the aircrafts they have the 30 minutes of the holding, 30 minutes emergency it can fly. But uh, some regulatory bodies they want that their aircraft should be able to fly for 45 minutes without any hindrance. So that is called the final reserve fuel or fixed reserve fuel or the holding reserve fuel. This fuel will maintain that in case of emergency, your aircraft is about to fly for 30 minutes without any problem. It can do the cruise, climb, it can land, it can do all the necessary performance of the aircraft for 30 minutes. Now I will discuss about the, the next topic. It is taxi and the trip fuel. So taxi fuel. Taxi fuel is the fuel used prior to takeoff and will normally include pre-start APU consumption, engine start and the taxi fuel. Taxi fuel is usually a fixed quantity for an average taxi duration. However, local condition at the departure aerodrome should be taken into consideration and the taxi fuel adjusted according. So the, what is a taxi? You know that there is a aircraft is parked here, it is called the dispersal. Your aircraft is parked here and here is the runway. It has to move from here to here. That is called taxiway. So the fuel consumption which is from here to here, it is called the taxi fuel. Okay, so taxi fuel is the fuel used prior to takeoff and will normally include pre startup APU. So, in this startup APU, how much fuel is taking? Engine start and taxi fuel. So, it is the APU, then engine start, and then this one. How much fuel is taken for this, this, and this? This is called the taxi fuel. Taxi fuel is usually fixed quantity for an average taxi duration. However, local condition at the departure aerodrome should be taken into consideration and the taxi fuel adjusted accordingly. So, accordingly this fuel has to be adjusted as per the requirement. Now, trip fuel burn or fuel to destination. So, means how much fuel is taken from destination A to destination B. That is called the trip fuel. The trip fuel is the required quantity 
from the brake release on takeoff at the departure aerodrome to the landing touchdown at the destination aerodrome. This quantity includes the fuel required for takeoff, that is, climb to cruise level, flight in level cruise, including any planned climb or the steep descent, flight from the beginning of the descent to the beginning of approach, approach landing at the destination. So, if you have to go from A to the destination B, so how much fuel is consumed, which includes the from runway it is climb, then cruise, descent, loiter, again descent, approach and till the time you are stopping at the end of the runway. So this is the your trip fuel and in this all the maximum fuel is consumed in this type of flight. So in flight fuel management, this we have to manage the fuel that it should not become empty. If it is taking more, more fuel consumption is more, we have to do analysis. So first we have to monitor. We have to monitor the fuel that how much it is consuming per second or the per minute. Then we have to do the analysis that why it is taking more fuel or why it is taking less fuel or any other abnormalities that we should do the analysis. Then we have to do the formulate, the mathematical expression for that. And then if required, we have to modify. And again, this cycle will continue. And this process is called the fuel management of the aircraft. In this, basically four important elements are there. That is the monitoring of the fuel, analysis of the fuel, formulation of the fuel and the modification of the fuel uh, consumption or the quantity. Procedure if fuel below a specific level. Sometimes what happens the aircraft is consuming more fuel or sometimes it may happen that due to some control is stuck in some places and it is consuming more fuel. So we should specify that how much fuel is required and what is the procedure to follow during this type of uh, situation. So in this step one, identification and the uh, communication of the fuel states. Always we should identify and the communicate how much is the fuel in the aircraft. Step two is in-flight fuel check value less than planned value, not less than required. So always we should make sure that, always you should check that if the fuel check value is less than the planned value, so not less than the required. Then step three is expected fuel remaining is approaching minimum value, minimum fuel states. Then emergency fuel situation, if it is arising that fuel is very, very less, we have to do mayday, mayday, mayday fuel, mayday, mayday, mayday fuel. This approach, this we have to communicate. So these are the five steps which we have to follow during if we feel that aircraft is less than the specified level of the fuel. These five uh, steps we have to follow. Next is the dumping of the fuel and the tank location. So dumping of fuel, we have to dump the fuel, excess fuel if it is there, just you can see, it is maybe due to the center of gravity variation or there is some engine failure and we want to land the aircraft, that time we have to eject the fuel, we have to dump the fuel. So these are the motor operated and uh, pilot will operate the fuel e e ejection cock and this will eject the fuel within no time as per the requirement. So fuel tank arrangement, we can uh, see here that this fuel dumping is done. First thing is to maintain the CG of aircraft or if fire is taking place due to engine failure, we want to reduce the weight So these are the few occasions where we do the dumping of the fuel and this you can see here. 
from here uh, fuel is ejected and this ejection will release the fuel as and when required. In this diagram it is A330 MRTT fuel tank arrangement. This you can uh, see here the pink color it is the fuel tank and here uh, it is a outer tank then this is the inner tank then this is the center tank then it is the inner tank outer tank and the vent tank here also we have the all the both left side and the right side we have the vent tank outer tank and the inner tank here we can have the fuel fueling also we have in the our horizontal tail also we have the fuel tank one is the called the vent tank and here we have the trim tank this all of the uh, systems are uh, there if we are shown in this for airbus 330 we have to see how to calculate the fuel so each person computing the fuel for the purpose of this uh, support shall consider the following a is wind and other weather condition forecast anticipated traffic delay one instrument approach and the possible missed approach at the destination any other condition that may delay landing of the aircraft so any person who is in charge for this computing of the fuel in the aircraft so wind and the other weather condition forecast they should know how what is the weather condition wind it is tail wind or the head wind or the side wind if anywhere the rain is there thunderstorm is there the clouds are there different things of the weather they have to understand anticipated traffic delay there may be some chances of the traffic delay so that also we have to take care of one instrument approach and the possible missed approach at the destination so we have to see that this aircraft should be able to handle number of missed approach or the any possible missed approach at the destination due to some weather condition or some due to the runway problems and all any other condition that may delay landing of the aircraft so these are the points which any person has to understand before the calculation that how much fuel is required for the particular purpose legal fuel requirements what is the as per the law of how much fuel is required so as per the law we should have the taxi fuel which is the standard figure as quoted in the aircraft handbook so it is the first one is the taxi fuel and it is how much your aircraft handbook is telling for the taxi how much fuel is required trip fuel from take off at the departure airport to landing at the destination airfield so trip fuel is from one location to another how much fuel is consuming contingency fuel is 5% of the trip fuel or 5 minutes whichever is the greater so 5% of the trip fuel or the 5 minutes whichever is more that we have to take in care alternate fuel fuel is fuel to farthest alternate so if any aircraft is going from bombay to hyderabad so in the near the hyderabad what are the another alternate airports so if it is the gmr airport nearby we have the begumpet airport we have the bundigal airport or somewhere we have some more distance also so we have to take care of such type of condition and we should make sure that aircraft should have 45 minutes for the piston engine aircraft drop tanks a drop tank that is called external tank wing tank or the belly tank so this drop tanks are also known as external tank wing tank or the belly tank is used to describe auxiliary fuel tanks externally carried by aircraft a drop tank is expendable and often capable of being jettisoned so this drop tanks may be removed means they are used for emergency purposes and as and when our fuel requirement is met they are dropped and next time they will again make new one and it will be fitted external tanks are 
common place on the modern military aircraft and occasionally found in civilian ones, although the latter are less likely to discard it except in case of emergency. So most of the military aircraft, they will have the drop tanks. Some of the civilian aircrafts are also having this type of drop tanks, but very rarely it is used only in case of emergency requirement. This you can see here that we are using here drop tanks here. Sometimes in the wing also we are using the drop tanks. They are very useful for different purposes. So this you can see they are, this is the one drop tank and this is also one drop tank. So fighter pilots are using to increase its in, uh, the range and endurance. So this aircraft can go for a long distance. First they will consume this drop tank fuel and after that they will release it and they will go for more distance for this purpose. Now we will discuss about the flight planning, very important planning for the aircraft. Once we have planned from going from one place to another place, we have to do the flight plan. So flight planning is the process of producing a flight plan to describe a proposed aircraft flight. It involves two safety critical aspects. There is the fuel calculation to ensure that the aircraft can safely reach the destination and compliances with air traffic control requirements to minimize the risk of mid-air collision. So the main objective of the flight planning is that the at, at a time one aircraft should be that speed, that altitude, they should go in the same direction. So we have to do the planning in advance so that air traffic controller can give you the a required altitude in that you can fly where you can ensure that the aircraft can safely reach the destination and complies with traffic control requirements. Flight planners normally wish to minimize flight cost through the appropriate choice of route, height and speed and by loading the minimum necessary fuel on board. Next is the fuel tankering. Fuel tankering is in, in fact taking some additional fuel as per the requirement. Fuel price variation in each local and absence of fuel or contextual constructions restrictions with supplier along the route may result in transporting more fuel than the minimum required by regulations from certain locations so as to minimize supply cost. The practice of carrying an extra quantity of fuel is called the fuel tankering or economic supply. So in fact what is the fuel tankering? Fuel tankering is just if any country or any place or any state if you land and if the cost of the fuel is much more than its destination cost, aircraft people or the aviation airline people, they will store the more fuel than the minimum required fuel and that fuel will be used so that they should not take the costly fuel in the destination. To avoid that, the system which is called the fuel tankering, some additional fuel is taken, that is for the economical supply. That is the economics is the main criteria for that. Example. In Brazil, fuel tankering is very common practice as there is a large variation in the tax rate on aviation fuel among the state. A variation of between 4 and 25 percent. So like if India, one state is giving 4 percent tax, another is charging 25 percent. So if the people is going at the 4 percent, they will take full fuel at this and they will go to a, another, they will not take fuel in this where the uh, taxes are high. So in this case, the Brazil is one of the example where this thing is done. Fuel tankering is basically carrying more than you need. Aircraft will do this for a number of regions. The main one that I can think of are 
high fuel cost at the next stop if the fuel is very high at the where you are stopping that time you will carry availability of fuel at the next stop if the availability of fuel is not there in the next stop that time also you have to take some extra fuel faster turn time if you want the immediately aircraft has to go for the next destination that time also you will do this procedure fuel a uh, big issue on aircraft operation to earn money an airline company need to have their aircraft up in the air as much as possible the problem is that fuel is very expensive and it keeps getting more expensive every day there are a lot of things you can do to lower the fuel consumption so how we can lower the fuel consumption aircraft fuel efficiency reducing the payload fuel also weighs so you only refuel the amount of fuel that is needed for the trip and for the alternate trip. so you should carry minimum fuel otherwise the weight of the aircraft will increase fuel consumption will be increased optimize the flight routes you should go in such type of route where it is taking very less time regular aircraft maintenance is required engine maintenance is required in the given interval fuel tankering you can perform the fuel tankering just now we have discussed the fuel tankering that you have to store some additional fuel if required now i will discuss in detail about the fuel tankering so fuel tankering is a way to lower the fuel cost by buying extra fuel in other countries where the fuel is cheaper you may think that if the fuel is cheaper at the arrival country you can just refuel as much as possible unfortunately it is not that easy so it is not easy to carry the more fuel because if you are carrying the more fuel the weight of the aircraft will increase and your fuel consumption will also increase risk with the fuel tankering here cold soaked wing is a phenomena where ice will form on the wing even though the air temperature can be well above the 0 degree so this is the one issue if you are flying on a high altitude for a long period of time where the air is below the 0 the temperature of the fuel in the wing can get to below 0 which will also make the wing surface temperature below 0 when descending if the wings come in contact with liquid water such as condensation or the rain the wing will begin to freeze this effect can have serious consequences because it can reduce the speed to such a degree that the aircraft cannot even reach the minimum speed for take off or maintain flight if you get cold soaked wing so if you get cold soaked wing you will need to deice your aircraft deicing means that you are warming up the fuel in the wing to above zero to prevent ice from forming on the wing this can take a long time and can get the aircraft to be delayed for next flight and money is lost so this is called the cold soaked wing and this can happen during the fuel tankering if fuel is more profit diagram of a boeing 737 with different routes so if you can see here that uh, tankered fuel 27 if you see here it is profit is less if you are taking the 2753 nautical miles and if you are taking 330 nautical miles it is the blue one you are getting the better profit and if you are getting 943 nautical miles you are getting the medium so if you want to get more profit you have to go in this route so this is your profit it is the highest if you see here it is the lowest it is a loss and here is the profit so if you want to go for a high profit your range should be for boeing 737 airport a 
13 KR, airport B, 15 KR. So it is just a small plot which depicts that if you are going at a less distance, you will get more profit. Fuel tankering process. So in this, a, a block diagram illustrates the fuel tankering process. So here it is an input data. Here is the performance calculation. Here is a intermediate results, fuel tankering module, final okay, results. Then it will give the feedback here if any correction. And in this way, we can calculate the fuel and how much fuel is required for a certain route or for the certain conditions. We should have some about some abbreviation which are used for aircraft aviation purpose. NOTAM. It is a notice to airmen. NOTAM means not means notice to aim a means airmen. Notice to airmen messages created and transmitted by government agencies and airport operation to alert pilots of any hazards. If any hazards are there, are any countries firing for test missiles and all, that time 48 hours before, that country will issue the NOTAM. All the people, all the airports will be aware that there is in this area we cannot fly. So, accordingly, they will plan the route and they will divert the route. MTOM, maximum takeoff mass. The highest mass allowable for an airplane to take off and airports runway. So, how much mass it can take off for a certain runways? ATOM, actual takeoff mass. The actual mass of the airplane when taking off. So, actual takeoff mass and it is a maximum takeoff mass. Maximum landing mass. The highest mass allowable for an airplane to land on an airport runway. So it is called MLM. ALM is actual landing mass. The actual mass of an airplane allowed when landing on the airport runway. Leg, a route between two airports is called the leg. Trip kit, a document that is handed to the pilot and that contains all the information for a certain flight. It is called the trip kit. So these are the few very important abbreviations which all aviators should know. NOTAM, MTOM, ATOM, MLM, ALM, LEG and the toolkit and they are the related to the uh, fuel consumption, fuel reserves, fuel calculation and so on. Fuel tankering management. So here we have some computational software. That software will just you give the input and it will give you the results. So it is the example is here that example is A320 moderate to Jewish, 4% increase in the total fuel consumption for a flight of two hours. Real example for one airlines data for year 1998. Quantity of fuel tankering for an airplane 90,000. Approximately so, okay, like this, we can get here that standard maximum takeoff weight 16,000. These are all the parameters we have to fill up in the software, and then this will give the result. In the next lecture, we will be discussing about problem solution on takeoff and the landing of the performance, and then we will see how much we are able to. We will be solving the equations and solving the problems related to the takeoff and the landing performance. We have some references here. They are the Anderson JR, JD J, Jr., Airport Performance and Design, International Edition, Magra Hills, first edition, 1999. SL by ME, Airport Performance Theory and Practice, AIA, Education Series, AIA. If any questions are there, you are welcome to ask. My e email is ydduvedi at the rate gmail.com. Please do like and subscribe this channel. And in the next class, we are going to discuss about the numerical problems. I will solve some two, three continuously. I will solve the numerical problem. Till then, goodbye and 
Thank you very much for the joining.